Okay. Okay, this is the sheet brain. You have three meningeal layers covering the sheet brain. Here you have the dura mater, which is on the outside, and you can see it on the outside of the sheet brain. It's like it's real tough. Then you have the arachnoid mater. The arachnoid mater is going to be all of this brown uh, stringy things in the arachnoid um, space. But you can see that they're concentrated around, this is the pituitary gland here, and you can see the brown strings around it, very concentrated, so that's also arachnoid mater. The pia mater, the pia mater is the tender, thin area that's always going to cover the brain and the spinal cord. You can take a blunt probe and push here, and it pops through the pia mater. We'll do that again. It pops through the pia mater. Okay, so that's the pia mater. The pia mater directly covers the brain and spinal cord, and you cannot remove it off the brain and spinal cord. Gyrus and sulcus. The gyrus is the raised areas here, and the sulci are these grooves or the wrinkles here. Okay, the part of the brain that has the gyri and the sulci are the, is the cerebellum. No, it's not, it's the cerebrum, sorry, <laughs> cerebrum. This is the cerebrum here, the largest part of the brain. This is the cerebellum here. Okay, if we look at the cerebrum, you have the outer two to four millimeters of the brain being the cerebral cortex. Let's look at the cerebrum and let's cut part of it. We're going to do a frontal cut and whenever you open it up, you see that you have the white on the inside and darker areas on the outside. The darker areas, if you also look to, here's one of the wrinkles here that the probe's passing through. You can see that you have the dark area kind of lining the wrinkle also. That wrinkle is called the what? Sulcus. Very good. <laughs> so here you have the white matter and here you have the gray matter. That gray matter on the outside part of the brain is called the cerebral cortex. So let's go to the next one, longitudinal cerebral fissure. This is the long way of the brain here. And your brain actually does not touch the other hemisphere until you get down to the C-shaped structure here called the corpus callosum. So whenever you're dissecting your brain, you can actually run your finger along this longitudinal cerebral fissure and you're not going to be able to you will see that the two hemispheres do not touch each other until you get way down in here to the cerebral cortex. I mean to the corpus callosum. <laughs> I was telling them in lecture today not to get those two things mixed up. Okay, your sagittal sinus. Whenever you put the two hemispheres together, you have like this little dip here in the middle. Whenever you remove your dura mater, you see that it's real thick right here in this area. Those are actually your dural sinuses, and they're going to sit in the sagittal sinus of your brain. So that kind of sits like this right here between your two hemispheres. Let me see if I can remove it right here on this and kind of give you an idea. You can see how much thicker it is right there. See, like that part right there is so much thicker. That's, what, that's where it sits is in the sagittal sinus. Okay, let's um, open up the brain. And let's, oh, let's look on the underside part of the brain that's identify structures. These right here are your olfactory bulbs. They're going to be in connection with your olfactory nerves, which are going to be for smell. These two structures here, this one and this one, those are the optic nerves. And where they cross is right here, the optic chiasma. You can see the back part of the X just a little bit right here and right here. Those are called the optic tracts. Let me see if we can see them a little bit better on one of the other models. Nope, we can't, okay. This is the pituitary gland here. And so now we'll open up the brain to see the other structures. Um, this one's very clear. This white C-shaped structure here is the corpus callosum. You see this round structure here? That is the thalamus. This right here is the optic chiasma, and the area between the optic chiasma and the thalamus is the hypothalamus. So this area right here is the hypothalamus. This is the pituitary gland again. From the thalamus, you can go out here to the brain stem. So from the thalamus, you have the midbrain. Then you have the pons, which is this wider area here. And this is the medulla. The frame and magnum would sit about right here. That part right there of the cerebellum is just like loose. Um, 
The frame and magnum would sit here, so this structure here is actually the spinal cord. It's not a part of the brain stem. This is the cerebellum here as it's cut open. Um, if we want to look at the ventricles, you have a ventricle on the right side of the brain that goes around the corpus callosum, and that space right there would be your right ventricle. On the left side of the brain, which I don't have, you would have the same ventricle, that would be the left ventricle. Around the thalamus, if you look at this area right here, you see a little bit of a space here. That is the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle is in between the brain stem and the cerebellum, it's right in here. You have this little duct that would be right in this area here. It's called the aqueduct of Sylvius, where your cerebrospinal fluid would travel from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So let's go back over this again. You have the larger part of the brain, which would be here. That is the cerebrum, the gyri, and the sulci. The gyrus is the raised area, and the sulcus is, um, would be the individual wrinkles. The cerebral cortex is the outer two to four millimeters that is gray matter. So you can look here and see that the inside is white and the gray is on the outside. You can see also that it follows the wrinkles. Okay, the longitudinal cerebral fissure is that deep groove between the two cerebral hemispheres so that the cerebral hemispheres are not connected until you get down to the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is this white C-shaped structure, so you can see it in both of these brains really well. It's in, actually, you can see it pretty well in every brain. This structure here, I call it C-shaped because it helps me remember corpus callosum, but it might not look like a C to you, but that big white area here, that big white strip there, is the corpus callosum. For those of you in lecture, remember that it's a type of commissural fiber. It's the largest commissural fiber. Okay, to look at your ventricles, while we've got this in our hand, Remember that the right ventricle is going to be around the corpus callosum. So it would be, this, both of these right here would be right because these are the right sides of the brain. You're going to have the thalamus here. You have to use your imagination sometimes on the thalamus because you have this circle part right here and you kind of have to just finish the circle with your imagination here. That's the thalamus. Okay. This right here would be the third ventricle because it surrounds the thalamus. The fourth ventricle is going to be between the cerebellum and the brain stem. So this right here would be the fourth ventricle here. The aqueduct of Sylvius would flow right here. You can kind of see a line right there. The aqueduct of Sylvius. Okay. This brain here has the pituitary gland attached and you can see your optic chiasma real well. If you look at the underneath part, here's your olfactory bulb, optic nerve, optic chiasma, and optic tract would be right here. Just a little bit of it, you see. You see these brown strings here? That's the arachnoid mater. This tough layer here that covers the brain is the dura mater. And then the layer that you can actually poke through on your brain is the pia mater. I think that's all for that.